Hi. With Season 2 announcements coming out either today or tomorrow, depending on where you live, I wanted to sort of do a final evaluation of where I think the characters stand now at the end of Season 1. For the record, I am an absolute nobody in the world of fighting games, and my thoughts here are more reflective of my experience just playing the game. I've never won a big or small tournament. I've, I've never even entered a tournament. My primary mode of play is either playing with friends or playing on the ladder online. Uh, as of today, I've gotten to heaven with a little bit less than half the cast. Soul, Nago, Milia, Zato, Chip, Faust, and Eno. Which is something I'm sure other people could do if they wanted. I'm not anything special. I'm, just a guy who has played fighting games a lot. <laughs> Please don't make me out to be more than just a guy. Also, as, as you may have noticed if you've watched any of my other videos, I have exactly zero video editing skills because I haven't done that since, like, middle school, which was a really long time ago. So, that disclaimer out of the way. I want to do this tier list a little bit differently from how I've seen other people do them. That is to say, I want to talk about the middle characters first. And these middle characters are Milia, Potemkin, Kai, Sol, May, Faust, Gold Lewis, Testament, and Biken. Uh, these nine characters are all really similar to each other, um, with the three I noted being slightly better uh, for different reasons. Um, with the exception of Milia, all of these characters are aiming to play a very fundamental strike throw or high-low throw game with varying degrees of hoops to jump through to start their offense. Um, what separates Milia, Potemkin, and Kai from the rest is the above-average mix in Milia and Potemkin's case, and the above-average neutral for Kai. Uh, Milia, if she knocks you down once, the game can potentially end, right? Like, unlike some of the other characters in the roster, she makes you guess a lot, and really frequently. Uh, running resets is Milia's game. Potemkin is the exact opposite of that, right? Like, two wrong guesses and you just lose outright. Which makes them marginally better than the characters below them. Kai, on the other hand, has received a lot of buffs. A lot of useful buffs, I should say. And they've all worked out really well for him. His mid-screen damage and knockdown have improved. The changes to like his far slash and his fireball really improved his neutral game. He's a very good middle-of-the-pack character, which is what Kai has always been. The other six characters are just ever so slightly worse, and I, I don't have too much to say about them. I know some people might think... Soul and May being down here is a bit, I don't know, controversial, but it's really not. Um, Soul really got gutted over the course of Season 1. The faultless defense changes, the far slash changes, the combo route changes, the 6S changes, all of that, and he just isn't nearly as strong as he once was. If you think about, like, Soul's 6S and Kai's, 6H, right? You can 6P or low profile Soul's button, but not Kai's, and they have the exact same frame data. You know, in Arxis' defense, they kept the things about Soul that people really enjoyed, right? The ability to just explode someone if you touch them, but his nerfs just make him an average strike throw character. Uh, he doesn't get a meaty Fafnir, anymore after Bandit Revolver, so he ends up with a lot of, a lot less plus frames per match now than he used to, and he's, he's just an above average character now, or just an average character, I mean. He, he's the Ken to Kai's Ryu, as it always was. 
May is about the same as she ever was in Strive, and I do feel like she's a little underexplored, but she occupies a lot of the same space as Soul. I did a little mini guide slash tutorial thing a while back for May that seemed to go over well. Um, she's about as basic as basic gets in Guilty Gear, and I, I don't really have a, much else to say about her. Uh, yeah, she does big damage, and yes, she can do some stuff in the corner, but her mid-screen conversions are below average outside of close slash. Her frame data isn't great, and her S Dolphin RPS isn't what it used to be since the patch that normalized the 6Ps. Um, Faust is quite good, actually. Much better than he was at the start of Season 1. He still lacks in damage, I think. I'd like to see maybe 10 to 15 more damage per combo for him. But otherwise, he's good. Um, his frame data is his weakest point, but he sort of forces RPS in block strings between item and tornado and scalpel, and like a good Faust will rotate through these options to keep you guessing. Um, people continuously underestimate the strength of his items, right? Like blah blah, trumpet is bad, and so on. All the items are good for different reasons. And they all make the neutral really tough to navigate for the opponent, and as my list sits, I think Faust has the most room to move around as stuff gets changed and new stuff gets discovered. Gold Lewis is a house if he can get his behemoth, behemoth Typhoon started, but starting that can be a bit difficult. He has some really polarizing matchups, but it is but he's really quite strong against characters that have to approach him. Um, knowing the frame data on the different BTs goes a long way towards fighting as or against Gold Lewis. Um, a good Gold Lewis player will blow you up just as fast as a Potemkin player. Testament and Biken are the weakest of the bunch. Testament is very similar to Kai to the point of, if, if you're looking to play Kai but don't want to play a bunch of mirror matches all day, play Testament instead. <laughs> they struggle in that a lot of their setups aren't real, as in you can get out of them almost always, and the stain mechanic is basically a one-shot flip kick shock state that you can get a full combo out of. Really, Testament is just remixed Kai with slower buttons and less stun dipper RC. Biken, on the other hand, has some tricks, but suffers from really bad frame data. Um, she has a couple okay pokes in Jump Slash and Jump Dust and Far Slash, but they don't really lead into anything. She's really meter hungry, right? Like a lot of these uh, nine characters really enjoy having a lot of meter more so um, than the other the, the characters that will end up above them. Um, Tatami, uh, Yozansen, and Kabari being negative on block means you always have to be mindful of how greedy you're playing when you're playing Biken. Um, she has to make reads and uh, play RPS a lot, and th these are some of the sort of the same issues um, that Anji has, which I'll talk about when I get there. Um, all nine of these characters are good, but f fundamentally they are fair, right, quote unquote, for however much that word is worth. Uh, and that what makes the characters, what makes them worse than the two tiers above them is either the strength of their game plan, like Faust's game plan is kind of weak compared to, like, Zato's game plan. Or, how easily that game plan is to execute, right? Like, Gold Lewis's game plan is quite strong, but if he never makes you block a Behemoth Typhoon, he never gets to start his game plan. And 
from there, I'm going to talk about the bottom tier. This is Anji and Chip and Jacko. These characters aren't bad or anything like that. Um, and they can, of course, win plenty of games. I just went through the ladder gauntlet with Chip, for example. But they have a, a couple of flaws that hold them back as the game currently stands. Anji is a difficult character to play well, because his entire game plan relies on his ability to make hard reads on his opponent. He does have a lot of strong things going for him. It's quite difficult to differentiate between neutral spin, fujin, and uh, up fans. And when he does hit you, he does fat damage, like soul levels of damage, nago levels of damage. But if you never make the correct read, it can be exceptionally difficult for Anji to get going. He also doesn't have great flame data, because Arxist envisioned him as sort of a footsy character of sorts. Sort of a whiff punish, footsy, everything confirms into Fujin kind of character. Uh, I don't think there's really a great solution to sort of fix quote unquote Anji's issues. But I do hope Arxis pays some attention to him in Season 2. On the other hand, we have Chip and Jacko. And Chip and Jacko have the same problems. First is their damage. Neither of these two characters do good damage, like straight up. Faust out damage of both of them, if I recall correctly. So that means, on average, they have to score one or two more hits than most of the cast to actually get a win. Which, you know, in a sense, they are both mix-up characters, right? So that's, like, a fair thing to ask of them. The problem is that scoring a mix-up with either of them, outside of the corner, sends the opponent flying all the way across the screen, right? Like, Jacko's combos either end in the... In the, in the punt, which sends them flying, or they end in 6H, which also sends them flying. Likewise, if Chip ends a combo in either of his Alpha Blades, or um, whatever his Rekka is called, I forget off the top of my head, you're, you're sent flying across the screen. This is like a fundamental issue, right? Like, if the point of these two characters is to put you in the mix, and the reward for putting you in the mix is that they, one, don't do any damage, and two, can't cycle the mix back in, right? Like, Milia's mix always leads back into Milia's mix, Eno's mix always leads back into Eno's mix, Zato and Leo's mix always leads back into the mix, whereas Chip and Jacko's don't. Right? They're, they're, they're very unrewarding and difficult to play. And that, to me, needs to be addressed if they're going to be solid characters in Season 2. Moving on, let's, let's jump to the top tier. Um, that's Happy Chaos, Nago, Ramlethal, Leo, and Zato. I think that... Happy Chaos is, without a doubt, the strongest character in the game. He's capable of absolutely dominating anyone. His steady shot, steady aim, whatever it's called, the plus on guard, plus on block guard crush from full screen or in your face is just flatly on a different power level than the rest of the cast. And there's a lot of factors that make this really strong. The Mist Grenade, which... I, I don't know the name of any of the moves. Mist Grenade is probably a little too hard to dodge, like a neutral jump won't dodge it. You have to super jump or double jump. That's, that's probably a little too hard to dodge. His reload being cancelable back into steady shots is either not intended or an oversight that Arxis didn't catch or didn't think about. But that's really strong. How fast the actual steady shot comes out, right, the, the guard break shot comes out, with or without the mist grenade is really strong. And of course, guard breaks themselves are really powerful in this game. 
on top of all these things, his bullets don't actually matter, right? It's, it's not a resource. Because you can shoot, reload, shoot so quickly, he essentially has infinite bullets. He never has to stop like a Zato does, right? Zato with Eddie is really scary, but Eddie does have to stop at some point. I fully expect Happy Chaos to be looked at, at the very least, in Season 2. It would be really wild to me if Arxis doesn't address him in some way. But I know, I know some of that depends on the feedback they get from the Japanese players, and I'm not Japanese, but I've read in the, I guess, Western, quote-unquote, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, Twitch sphere that Japanese players don't really rate him highly as of this moment, but I don't know. I still think this character is insanely good. And if you have any doubts, just, just go watch Ramala play. But <laughs> then again, this is the same Arxis that just buffed Johnny to no end and Exerd, so who knows. And on top of all of these things, Happy Chaos only has three bad matchups. He's bad against Giovanna and Chip because they're so fast, and he's bad against Potemkin because he just doesn't have an answer to Slidehead or Hammerfall. So you have to play sort of niche characters to even counter Happy Chaos, whereas the rest of the cast he can just blast through no problem, especially when all it takes is like a grenade into steady shot at round start to kind of start his game. I don't know. It's, it's too easy for him to get into it, and it's too hard to get out of it once it starts, and that's why he's number one. The rest of the top tier characters, Nago, Ram, Leo, Zato, these characters have been quite strong for a while now. I don't feel like I have to say all that much about them. They're all strong in their own ways, right? Nago's spin being zero on block and a gap closer, and you can't 6p it, and it counter hits low profile moves like Soul Sweep, and you can't neutral jump punish it like Maze Dolphin. It, it does a lot of damage. Uh, his fireball, the thing where he shoots the clone at you, is also incredibly strong, right? It's plus on block, it beats every other fireball in the game. It's free for him to follow it in and have immediate plus frames in your face. Nago's just really strong. And the Hotashi spend all the blood and pop in your face style is maybe not the way I like to play Nago, but it's really powerful if executed well. With Ramlethal, her mix-ups are all real, right? Like, you can't push a button. If the Ramlethal player doesn't want you to push a button, then you can't push a button, because all of her corner frame traps are tight. Likewise with Zato, when he's got you in the corner or in the sandwich, he can make all of his stuff tight. And both of these characters do big damage while having pretty good neutral. Leo is a bit of an outlier here. Um, Leo doesn't do as much damage as people think he does. Um, he has some of the strongest tools in the game. He has the best DP, the best fireball, and so on. Once again, like if one of the defining factors of the tier list is how easy it is for the mix character to get you into the mix, right? Leo is one of the best at getting you into the mix because he can uh, not, not Berserker Slash, but you know, the, the run through. He can run through you on any blocked or hit normal, so it's always quite easy for Leo to begin his game plan, which just makes his game plan really strong. And you, you, you can counterplay, right? There's counterplay to almost everything, but like, again, because it's easier for him to mix you, it's easier for him to do what Milia does, but he doesn't have to score Milia's hard knockdown first. And then the final three. That's Giovanna, Axel, and Eno. Um, these three are all characters that are really good, but not as common, not as commonly played as the ones above them. I feel like Giovanna in particular is wildly underplayed. I think she is without a doubt the best strike throw character in the game. She, with amazing frame data and amazing movement options to back it up. She has the best dash and air dash in the game. 
it's it's no surprise to me that players like Apology Man and Lord Knight are looking to Giovanna to sort of as like their you know secondary character for how much secondary characters matter. They're looking at Giovanna to overcome their main character's weaknesses, and Giovanna as a character doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. Like, if the strength of Soul or May is that they have plus buttons in a game with very few plus buttons, right, where you have to guess if they're going to frame trap you or throw you, like, Giovanna has that. <laughs> right, but she also has the incredibly long-range, disjointed sweep, and she has the plus on block overhead, the, the flip kick, that's also a left-right, and she has amazing safe jumps, and she has the plus on block, uh, what's it called? Uh, Treveo? Uh, the spiral arrow, uh, to steal her turn back. She's just really good and criminally underplayed. She's probably the best strike throw character in the game, like I said. Like, anything Soul or May or Biken or even, like, Gold Lewis or Potemkin can do to you to an extent, she can do it, but better. And the trade-off for Giovanna is that she does marginally less damage than, like, Soul or May, but she has a lot of corner carry, right? Like, if May counter hits you mid-screen, it's not that big of a deal. But if Giovanna hits you mid-screen, she can take you from one corner to the other quite easily. Um, Eno. Eno is probably the third best mix-up character in the game. Like, Leo ahead of her, she has the same sort of ease of mix-up. She gets to start a game plan really easily. All you really have to do as an Eno player is get someone to block her jump slash, and now they have to guess if you're going for a follow-up JD, or land and do a low, or land and do a throw. Uh, mi mixing people with Eno is really easy. And like Milia below her, all of her mix cycles back into her mix, right? Her, her damage is kind of above average for her archetype. She does a, more damage than Leo, she does more damage than Chip, she does more damage than Jacko. It, it, it's, it's about on par with Milia. The only mix-up character with amazing damage is Zato, which is why he's arguably the best mix-up character in the game when you're a mixed character and you only need two hits to kill someone, it's hard to be a bad character, right? But, Eno has a lot of guesswork involved when you play against her, and it's really easy to force that guess on your opponent, to put them in that uh, situation. Uh, what she lacks compared to Zato is sort of, like we talked about, damage, but also neutral options. Uh, Zato has a lot of pretty okay pokes, and all of the other mix-up characters don't really have good pokes, except for uh, Chip and Jacko have okay pokes, but they have other problems, so so that's Eno. And then last is Axel. And Axel is really underplayed for how good he is, or rather, how good, not how good he is, but how, how good his matchups are. Right, like almost every one Happy Chaos is good against, Axel is also pretty good against. He's really good against Nago. He's really good against Leo, he's quite strong against Zato and Potemkin and Soul and Biken and so on. He just doesn't have, like, the raw ability that Happy Chaos does, but Axel is quite strong. I know Lord Knight plays him once in a while, Remy Celeste is another good Axel player off the top of my head. He just, he has a lot of good matchups against a lot of good characters. Um, he's sort of the anti-meta pick in that way, and that places him up higher on the tier list. He's not bad on his own either, he's got good damage, he's got good zoning, he's got the, the same kind of knowledge checks that other characters have. Uh, he's, he's good. He's good. Um, and with that, I think I've talked about everyone. Um, I'm looking forward to Season 2 of Strive. There are still some characters from Exord I'd like to see come to the game, right? We're still missing Slayer, we're still missing Jam, uh, <laughs> we're still missing Elf out, but yeah, th those are my thoughts. This is where I think the state of the game is at the end of Season 1. So, thank you.